Hey everybody, Eric here from Tournamix, the ultimate mix competition website. I hope you're doing well today. Real quick, if you like mix contests, please check us out. There's a link in the description below. We run two mix contests every single month. It's a lot of fun. Go check it out. At the time that this video is made, we do offer a 30 day free trial. So, you know, you can try it out for free. See if you like it. And of course, if you like what you hear today, please subscribe and leave us a comment. So today we're looking at the amazing Vertigo Sound VSM4. Now many of you are probably familiar with the VSM3, which is uh, available through Plugin Alliance. And um, they're not normally this different in size. I just I just have this uh, this one blown up to 150% in case you're wondering. Um, but th this plugin here, the VSM3, is well known, and it's also a great plugin. Um, but it's not to be confused with the VSM4, even though they share very similar controls and workflow. Um, you know, the, the VSM4 is not like an updated VSM3. It's its own thing. It has its own sound, and uh, Vertigo Sound makes that very clear in their manual. This is not like a successor to the VSM3. All right, so um, you know, if you're familiar with this plugin, um, then learning the VSM4 is going to be very, very simple. But if you've, you know, never heard of either, well, that's what this video is for. All right, so let's just hop right into how this plugin works. Um, I've got a bass pulled up here just so we can kind of do audio examples as we go. Let me just loop this little section here. So the first thing is the input section, and this is like a gain staging thing, and it is kind of important to pay attention to this. So if I play this bass, you can see it's a pretty weak signal. We're getting a little flashing light here, but we're the input signal is kind of uh, kind of low, and technically that doesn't matter. But when you go to drive, you know your source, you might just end up in a situation where you have to crank it all the way around and still not get enough drive. So you know it's important to kind of just um, pay attention to this meter here. What I like to see is usually that the lights flickering around minus twelve or minus six. So what I'll do first is just push up the input gain, pull down the output, which is on the other side. Let's go up maybe like. 8 dB or so. Right. So you can see there now, um, I'm not going to be too worried about the level matching, but you can see now we have more of a healthy input signal. You also want to make sure you're not clipping. Okay. So if you're in the red, if you're feeding this like a, uh, maybe a, a mix, you, maybe you're a master engineer and you got a mix that was really hot, you'll want to, you know, pull that down. But either way, just pay attention to your input gain. The last thing I'll say about this input and output that's really, really handy is sometimes you've got all your, your saturation dialed in just the way you want it, but then you kind of want either just a little less of it or a little more of it. So, you know, sometimes the last thing you can do is just experiment with driving the input up like just a bit, maybe one dB and compensating on the output if you need to, or maybe you want to just kind of lower the effect a little bit. So that's another reason why this input and output is so handy. All right, then the next um, the next stage in this plugin is actually a brand new feature. This is something that is not in the VSM3. It's a transformer stage of saturation, okay? The VSM3 only has two tube stages. This one has this additional stage, which is really, really cool. Now, in my experience, transformer saturation is fairly subtle. Let's hear it on this bass here. I'll just turn it on here and push up the drive. Awesome part about this is it's level match, so we're not gonna get any increase in volume. Let's hear this. Let's go all the way. So there you can hear some drive. Let's hear that off. All right, cool. So there's a world of possibility there, um, and it's just an additional stage of saturation to play with. Um, pretty cool, actually very, very handy. It's, it can really sound great on certain sources. They've also included this little kind of bass lift section. I'm not 100% sure why this was included, but I'm, I'm glad it was. Um, I don't know, like maybe sometimes when you drive something hard, you lose low end, so you have this handy little low end. Uh, it seems to be kind of like a low shelf. It's, it's not terribly clear in the manual. Um, but either way, you have this bass lift section here, which you can play with. Let, let's hear that. Turn the drive down for a second. Pretty subtle on this source. You can hear it warms it up. So the cool thing about this is that like on a full mix or on this bass guitar, for example, it just gives you one other little creative thing to play with. And I have found, especially on mix bus, this is really nice for warming up the low end. Let's hear this on and off again. Let's drive that a bit more. Cool. That's kind of nice, actually. And you can see this little indicator here. You know, when it starts to turn red, it means you're getting fairly significant drive. So. You know, right now we're hitting it pretty hard, harder than I might want to. Still sounds good though. 
All right, so that's the transformer saturation, brand new and pretty awesome. Next we have the triode. So this is like the first tube stage of saturation followed by the pento. These are both tubes and they run in series. This whole plugin runs in series. So transformer into triode into pento. On the VSM3, you had the ability to run th these two sections in parallel. For whatever reason, they didn't um, include that ability in this plugin. It's For me, it's kind of nice. It's just one last thing to think about. All right, so let's move over to the triode saturation. And this module here works exactly the same as the pentode. So I'm just going to go over the controls on this section. And it, it it's mirrored over here, OK? And so the logical starting point is to add drive. Now, unlike the transformer section, when you add drive, you are going to get volume. OK, so to compensate for the volume boost, you have this level knob here. OK, and you've got these two little indicators which kind of give you an idea of whether you've gained or lost level. Keep your eye on those. Let's drive up some some uh, some saturation here and see how it sounds. We've got it turned on here, by the way, too. And I've turned off the, the transformer section. Here we go. off so you can see these little two indicators here like if, if the level was way up here you can see it's kind of a, a I don't know how to say it a, a darker signal over here so that shows that you're you're mismatched whereas we want to be you know around there okay so you can hear that is a kind of a warm style of saturation. The pentode is, is brighter, and we'll come back to that in a bit. All right, so those are the two main controls, drive and output level. And that's sort of typical of, of all your saturation plugins. Um, there are some more things to look at, though. Um, one, one little section that I often forget about is this bias section. And this sort of just changes the characteristic of the saturation. Let's hear if we can hear a difference here. Let's drive it up. They sound a bit different. I think I prefer it on the high for this uh, this setting. It might be more apparent on like a full mix. All right, now the next thing to, to look at is the input filter. And this basically allows us to control where in the frequency spectrum the saturation is applied. Okay, so by default, it's in track. Okay, and track, what that means is that the saturation is applied to the full frequency spectrum. So it's affecting everything. If we shift to full, now we're leaving everything below 120 hertz alone, okay? So it's just everything above 120 hertz that gets saturated. And then we have high, which affects just the highs, high, mid, mid, and low. So we've got these different options for where we steer the saturation. It's, it's really, really handy. All right, now one thing that's amazing about the VSM4 is we now have this different option, which is just called mode. If I engage mode, now we have a sweepable Okay, um, ability. So, you know, we're not limited to like, you know, just mid, whatever, whatever that is. We have a sweepable option where we can pinpoint exactly where the saturation goes. All right, so to illustrate this, I'm going to make use of a really, really handy feature called Distortion Solo. Now, this allows us to listen to just the distortion, okay? So because we're working in triode here, I'm going to go to triode. But we could also go to pentode if we were working, wanted to hear the pentode mode. Or we can even listen to both. We'll come back to this. Very, very handy. Let me leave it on triode. So now we're going to listen to the saturation, okay? And, and see how they, they sound. Let, let's hear it. That's affecting everything. It's interesting, you can hear that shift between track and full. Again, this goes from everything to everything above 120, and you can hear that the low end becomes a little tighter. It's a bit fuzzy. Right? Now high, which, not surprisingly, there's not a lot of saturation in the very high end of the bass. Let's go down. Right? Now remember, we're listening to just the distortion. Let me switch into mode here. So we can just pick our spot. That's a really, really cool feature. I love that they introduced that. All right, so let me switch out of distortion solo mode. Okay, so now we're going to listen to the actual signal with the distortion. And let's let's hear it now. Let's go back to track so it's affecting everything. See, now again, I'm going to switch into mode here so that I can sweep it. It's kind of cool. 
All right, you get the idea. All right, now I'm going to go back to Distortion Solo here, okay, and, and talk about the shape control here. This is really, really cool as well. So uh, this allows us to add a low-pass filter to the distortion. So sometimes if the distortion is too harsh, okay, this will give us the ability to to kind of just make it a little softer. So let's, let's go to maybe, let, let me go back here to like high mid. Let's hear this. Let's really drive it. Now, if that was too fizzy for you, you can take the edge off. Right? Hear that harsh high end? It's gone. Right? So again, it affects just the saturation, not the core signal itself. Very, very handy. Um, bass is not the best example because it doesn't have a lot of high end, but on a full mix, this can be a real game changer. All right, so let me put the shape back up and uh, let, let, let's check out the THD mix. This is a simple mix, uh, mix knob. So let me go out of solo distortion mode here and uh, let's listen to the full thing and blend in some blend in some parallel saturation. Let me start with it completely, uh, completely dry and we'll, we'll bring it in. So that's where we started essentially, right? So instead of having like full blown, you could just do something like that. Let me shift the, the frequency range. It's kind of cool. Let's turn it off. All right, and then the last thing to look at is just this little middle, left, right, or sides section. So this this doesn't apply to mono sources, so I've, I've called up a stereo source here so we can take a look. Um, in, in mono, um, th this is actually deactivated because it, it can't do anything in mono. Um, but on a stereo source, we can choose to apply the saturation either to the middle, just the middle, right, left and right, both or just the sides. And we, we can do that for both uh, of the tube um, stages here. So this adds a mid-side um, component and a whole other world of experimentation. So um, I'm gonna leave it in left-right for now. I've got a little mix called up here. It's not a finished mix. It's just a little a mix I did of a song we did a while ago. I, I turned a mix called Holiday. This is not the official mix that I did years ago. Um, I was trying out some new plugins and I just needed some source material to, to mess around with. So let's just hear this mix real quick. Come on, honey. All right, so I think it sounds pretty good. It's it's in decent shape, but if I was like a mastering engineer and this mix was sent to me, maybe I would try the VSM 4 and see if I could add a little bit of extra life to it. So let me just kind of play around here. Let's start with the transformer um, section. Let me turn it on here, and we'll, we'll come back to this middle, left, right, and sides in a moment. Um, let's, let's hear the transformer. This is probably going to be pretty subtle. Let's hear it. You can see our input level is about right here. Drive it up a bit. Come on, honey. Let's take a ride. That's quite a bit. Let's take a hard You can hear it's kind of breaking up the kick a bit. Holiday. It's a sunny day. Let's take our time. And off. Come on, sweetie. Let's take a drive. Yeah, I still find this section quite subtle. A lot of people love transformer saturation and, you know, I want to. <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. I just find it harder to hear than these two other sections here. I'm just going to leave it there for now. L let me maybe quickly play with the bass lift. It's kind of nice. Come on, honey. Let's take a ride. All right, let's move over to the triode saturation. Now I'm going to leave it in left right mode for the for, for to start and we're going to leave it in track mode. So this is affecting the entire mix. Let's push up some drive. Turn it on too. Come on, honey. Let's stick. All right, so there you can clearly hear it distorting the kick. Um, let's see if going to full mode, which will not affect below 120, let's see if that helps. Let me just loop this section before the vocals. Let's listen to the kick. Okay, that's clearly saturated. Let's go to full. Not as bad. Now we've got too much saturation right now. Let me just pull that back. Come on, honey. It's off. Let's stick around. Let's take a holiday, it's a sunny day, 
Let's take our time. Let's try the bias. Come on, sweetie. Let's take a drive. I think I like high better. Who knows where we'll go. Well, let's listen to what the saturation is uh, in solo here. This is the tryout. Go. Cruise the country road. You go to high, maybe? We'll take our time. Let's go back to full. Fly, fly away. Fly wherever we may. All right, it's starting to sound kind of cool. Pretty subtle. I find the triode the warmer side uh, of the two not as i really really like it but it, it doesn't sort of add quite as much as the pento to my ear or it's not as noticeable let's uh disengage the entire plugin and see where we started we'll start with it on this is transformer and triode and off come on honey let's take a ride it's actually really nice Let's take a holiday. It's a sunny day. Let's take our time. I'm hearing more definition, more depth, and just sort of like a little sparkle to everything. It just sounds a lot more alive. And we haven't really done anything to kind of brighten it up yet. So um, the pentode section, which we'll turn on now, works just the same, right? Um, this one is really good for adding sparkle. So um, I'm going to start in, in track mode, so affecting everything and left-right mode. But we'll play around with a few different settings. Let's let's try this one out. Let's get some drive. Come on, honey. Turn it off. Let's take a ride. Let's take a holiday. Turn the whole thing off. It's a sunny day. Let's take our time. All right, that's kind of cool. Come on, sweetie. Let's listen to just the pentode. Let's take a drive. So because we're in track mode, it doesn't sound that different when you switch to the, to the distortion solo because remember it's affecting everything. Let's cycle through here and see if we can find a range we might want to use. So here's full. I mean, it's very similar. Here's high. So we could just saturate the highs. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to come out of distortion mode. Let's just saturate the highs. Let's try this. Turn it off. Come on, honey. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's take a ride. Let's take a holiday. It's a sunny day. Let's try it just on the sides. So this is going to saturate just the sides. Day. Let's take our time. Come on, sweetie. Let's listen again. Who knows where we'll go? Cruise the country road. We'll take our time. That's nice. Fly, fly away. Fly wherever we may. I'm hearing just a little bit too much saturation on the sides there. Let me solo it up again, just the pentode, and we'll maybe play with the shape. Compared to... Let's try that. Let's come out of solo mode and let's go back to the start. Can really hear it die there listen to that intro again starting with it on off come on honey let's take a ride here it just perks up the whole mix let's take a holiday it's a sunny day let's take our time 
really, really like that. And and the reason I love this on Mixbus is that if you're, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, that sounds great, but it's kind of subtle. That's kind of the point, okay? Like a lot of times on Mixbus, especially this is kind of like a mastering context here because I don't have access to all the individual tracks. Um, a lot of times subtle is what you want. And I don't like to push this thing too hard on Mixbus. I just want that subtle little glow. Now, one thing I haven't really thought about yet is peak values. Let me turn this off and let's just see where this mix is peaking. Right, so 8.6, minus 8.6. Let me turn this on. I'm not sure if this is gonna lower the values or not, but it just might. Let's hear it. Yeah, a little bit. So we've lowered the peak values by about a dB. Um, often you can get much more than that depending on how hard you drive it, but even getting one dB of, of you know peak lowering is good. It's helpful, right? Um, and, and it's still just as loud. One more final AB. Come on, honey. Just sounds sort of dull. Let's take a ride. Let's take a holiday. That's awesome. It's a sunny day. Let's go back to left right mode. Let's take our time. Come on, sweetie. See, I don't like that as much. Let's take a drive. Who knows? Let's try it where it affects just the middle. Where we'll go. Cruise the country road. We'll take our time. Yeah, the wide mode is just great. Now, there's one thing we haven't looked at yet, which is this little rebalance feature here. So you can see mid or side. So sometimes when you're playing with these, especially if you're using, you know, the, the mid side capabilities, Sometimes you can ruin the, the balance of your track, like you can end up pushing up the sides too much or the middle too low or whatever. So this section here is really cool because it allows you to kind of make sure, just quickly make sure that you didn't mess up your imaging. So like, let me give you an example here. Let me, let me say I put this into middle here, this tryout into middle. Let's hear this. So I can, with the level control, affect the middle a lot more if I want to, see? See the bass come up? Come on, honey. So in that case, by the time you've gone through all this, if you accidentally messed up your balance, you can quickly fix it here. Let's listen. Let's take a ride. See, I can bring back the sides. Let's take a holiday. Compared to if I go back to It's a sunny day. Here the vocals get really loud. Let's take our time. Come on, sweetie. Let's take a drive. So that's kind of a handy feature. I haven't had to make use of it too much, but it's there if you need it. Um, again, it can just be a quick way to rebalance the stereo image of it. And then real quick, there's just um, one more thing as a part of the monitoring section. We've looked at the distortion solo, but you can also just listen to the middle of the mix or the sides of the mix. Okay, this is the actual mix as opposed to the distortion. So for example, if, you know, if I switch to mid the middle here, you can listen to just the middle or just the sides. And this can just be handy while you're dialing in things. You know, I don't use this a lot, but there are times where this is very, very handy. Um, so that's kind of all the features on this thing. Um, there is an endless amount of, of, you know, experimenting you can do with it. It really is a powerful tool. I love it on Mixbus, but it's really, really good on track level too. Uh, let me play you one more mix with it on and off. All right, so this is the Bendito song that we did this month at Tournamix, and I actually use very similar settings to what I just showed in Holiday there. So I've got, I'm saturating just the sides, okay? The high end of the sides, and then the full frequency range with, um, you know, with the triode, and then using the, the transformer just a bit. This is a pretty good example of how powerful this plugin is. Uh-huh. Trust will say nothing to no one, no how or we'll bus will never crack a smile, a flinch, a cry for nobody. Uh-huh. Well give your ID card to the border guard. Cause now you really says your captain. Shall look a card of the United Federation of Planets. Especially in that section there, on and off is night and day. Let's try that again. Well, give your Cause he won't speak English anyway Everybody knows That the world is full of stupid people 
so meet me at the mix. Yeah, so you can hear it just really, really perks up the mix, keeps it sounding, you know, alive and, and exciting. And, uh, you know, just a really, really powerful tool. So I think I'll leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. That was the Vertigo VSM4 from Vertigo Sound. Thank you so much to this company for sponsoring our mix contest this month in May 2022. Very, very cool of them. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy mixing. We'll talk soon.